Okay, so the name of my dissertation is the quantity surveys, the quantity surveys rolling cost advice on household solar installation in the southern, in the South African construction industry. So I was advised to use that name, but I don't know why they would tell some of the stutters to use that long name. <laughs> yeah. But for me, it's only the cost advice on household solar. So, um, I was actually supposed to complete my bonus uh, last year, but I struggled with my dissertation. At first, I wanted to uh, look into alternative construction methods other than other than bricks, concrete, or steel, because I believe there has to be something else. And for now, in South Africa, I don't think there is, but there was this one girl that actually that had this presentation on a uh, new timber. So I think there might be in the future. But yeah, at the beginning of this year, I had a discussion. I had a discussion with my older brother about this topic, and he was just like uh, telling me to make it just a bit more simple, a bit more easy to do. Because he said I failed last year, but this might cause me to fail again. I wouldn't be able to complete it. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I can make it easier. I can make it a lot more easier. But I mean, what purpose would it be? Will it help anyone or anything? It would, I would just, just waste a bunch of hours doing, doing, doing research on something that that wouldn't contribute to anything in today's society. And I also told them that I do want to make a change, whether it's today, tomorrow, whenever, but I am going to make a change somehow. So the more and more I went into this, I just started to realize how actually important the story is becoming because everyone. One solar, the load shedding is just annoying everyone. The, the increase in demand for electricity is getting high and high and high every year, but we can't produce enough now. So, will we be able to produce enough in four or five years? I don't think so. So, yeah, this, this was a very fun topic for me. It's something I. Very much enjoyed, so uh, I hope you enjoyed with me. I guess. Okay, so uh, before this presentation, which is basically going to discuss these few um, items, it's basically introduction. We're just going to get through the basics of the of first. To be expected, the background will be, will be a bit more background about the state of South Africa that contributed to the problem formulation about why I did this study. Then the literature review will delve more into the solar components and the solar systems. The origin findings will only be, uh, be the methods I used to gather the info and what the findings was. And when we get to the conclusion, um, yeah, that's when I will uh, talk a bit more about the project and what I learned and how everything changed. Okay, so before I continue to the actual presentation, do any one of you have any questions? Does any one of you don't they have any solar on the houses installed in the systems? Do you all wish or not? Okay. Uh, can you guys maybe tell me what's the. Can you guys maybe tell me what is the DOD on the, DOD on the batteries or the life cycles? <laughs> okay. You? Yeah. Do what? Shall but we'll get to that. Yeah.
Okay, but why three years? Pardon? Why three years? How did they get? The last time that we had. Okay. Okay. And the DOD? Okay, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> this is why we're doing this. Do something fun. Okay. So, <laughs> injured. So it's just that a landscape, I believe South Africa has a very promising landscape to generate electricity in South Africa, as you will see on the graphs that are giving you the more red the places in South Africa get, the better potential they have to generate electricity, the more heat and more sunlight and everything. But there is a kind of a twist. On it, the warmer it gets, the less efficient the solar panels get because they can't really handle the intense heat. But there are, how do you call it? Uh, there the, the are this thin foam application that you can put on the solar panels. But the, okay, they are very efficient, but they die out quickly. So you can't use them on. Other forms, but you, if you live in one, because if you're putting them in a house, it will work just perfectly. Okay, so, and the quantities of virus in the construction realm is also like that they have a defined of duties that they have to do. Once we study, we go into, we learn about construction, we learn about uh, contract law, labor law, physics. Mathematics, all these stuff. So once we get out, we have to go into construction. That's it. We know construction. We know how to measure bricks, concrete, all this stuff. But once there comes item like uh, solar installations and stuff like that, we can't give any cost advice on the solar because we don't know anything about the solar. So I, I don't think that's something that's right because in our source, there's general there's generally not any electrical engineer present to, uh, to give some advice. So it's important to allow QA, so that's always, what's the word? Tin word, I'm sorry. Always present. Yeah. Present, yeah. So that they can actually give sound advice on what to use, such as the, the DOD, the life cycle, all these stuff. People have to know these things before they make a choice. You can't just install a solar and think, yes, it's going to work, it's lacquer, and for your latest, you have a bunch of a bunch of problems. So the aim was basically to determine how much do quantities of us know about solar and the application thereof and everything uh, about it, and to identify key elements to create a model that quantities of us can use to actually give advice to clients. I wanted to create a model, something like the um, standard system um, standard system of measurements that was published by uh, the ISA QS and just make that available for QSs to help them advise clients. Yeah, and the research, to do that, the research I incorporated as a the world system where I had to do a, a, lot, of, a lot of literature review uh, to find out more about solar systems and all of the components and the question there's the curious to determine how much I know and I also had to have, have interviews with work uh, with, with solar specialists and electrical engineers to determine yeah, the correct method of building this model because I, I, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Okay, so a bit of background with, with this. Um, can I ask, who can go for a weekend without electricity? Go camping or go fishing. You can take like a night lamp or something, but no electricity. <laughs> Nothing. We can just go out fishing or hunting, just go isolated. A day? <laughs> okay, not even a day. Okay, what about a week? Week, month, 
Okay, so it's easy to say electricity is very important for everyone, for the daily users. It's very important for businesses to keep the light on, keep the uh, appliance on, and everything. So it's quite important to keep electricity going. And with the load shedding and everything going on, businesses has to buy a lot of petrol and diesel to keep the generators going, to keep the electricity going, which is all just contributing to the CO2 emissions. Man, yeah, a lot of air pollution. The same can be said for places like Soweto and stuff like that. We need to actually give them electricity, although they aren't paying, we need to give them electricity. And with the rapid rise of demand for electricity through houses going up, businesses going up and all that stuff, we now have something called the ESA Energy Crisis. We got the name ESA Energy Crisis back in 2004 when we had our first shortage of electricity where we had to start with the load shedding system. But that's only when the ESA Energy Crisis became visible. The problem started back in 1994, after apartheid, a bunch of sanctions were dropped. So there came a rapid industrialization, uh, high demand for electricity, and this need wasn't met by construction of more power plants. It was just actually met by delaying the maintenance of the existing power plants just to keep everyone's life or else if something might happen, people might boycott it, start getting mad. So yeah, with the is it energy crisis, the government in 2001 also decided to launch a free free energy program, something like that, sorry, I forgot the name, but it's free energy program where we gave low income households about 50 kilowatt, you know, 50 megawatt. For our, for, I'm not sure how long, but in today's day and age, that would cost us about 1.1 billion rand to continue to do that. Even though it's not something that's still in place, we still have that problem with municipalities not paying uh, the account. I forgot about that. Sorry. Struggling with the English a bit now. Okay, so yeah, the SA energy because it's just, keep getting worse and worse because the maintenance of the power plants isn't being done. They're spending millions to buy brooms to keep them clean, so hopefully that they are clean. So yeah. But there is kind of an answer that we do have for the energy crisis. Um, we do have the ability to build large, large solar plant, uh, plants. I know in uh, Douglas, they are currently because with the planning phase of an another solar plant there, and there's all, 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 all ready to up in that area. Because Kimberley has one of the highest potential for solar system to generate electricity through PV panels. But the thing is, I, I believe that areas like Uppington, which is a bit more in the darker area, has a high potential, but we can't really build that many solar farms there because of the efficiency going down the other gates. That's when we get the concentrated solar power. With the, with the concentrated solar power, it is basically a bunch of mirrors that are packed in a circle and they focus their light on the tower in the center to, uh, to heat the liquid up, which is usually a, a, a synthetic oil. This is, this is, this synthetic oil is then used uh, to create steam, which is activating the turbines, uh, then to produce electricity. So, with this all in mind, there are ways we can we can handle the is it the, the it's an energy crisis, but it still doesn't speak to the individuals, the homeowners that that's also affected by lotion. We can't wait until they have everything in place and then say, okay. Now we are happy. So with this in mind, there's a rapid increase for solar. I mean, if we go out today and ask everyone, listen, I'll pay for everything. I'll pay for solar system, everything you don't have to pay for nothing. It's free. Do you want it? Everyone will say yes. But if you tell them, okay, you have to pay. Okay, now I don't want it anymore. Because why don't we have solar 
on our houses is, is expensive and we might move. If we install now, we lose our job, the company closes because of the load shedding, everything. Now we have to find a new job. Getting a new job in Cape Town, we can't take this, the solar system with us. It's, a, it's fixed to the house. So I install it. But how do we know when do we see a, a positive ROI? Those things are not communicated to us. That's why I still believe that QSs should be able and must be able to actually advise clients with stuff like this. Okay. Yes. Cool. Okay, I'll do it fast. Okay. PV system. We have three main PV systems. It's on grid, grid side, and hybrid. Ah, sorry. Off grid, grid side, and hybrid. On grid means it's only a system that generates electricity and helps you lower your cost while connected to the grid. Once you have load shedding, the on-grid system is also down, so it won't uh, avoid load shedding. Uh, grid side is a hybrid of uh, off-grid and hybrid is a combin sorry, hybrid is a combination of off-grid and and grid uh, system where it can take you off grid and it also can supply electricity back to uh, to the grid. Whereas off grid is only a PV system that that's off the grid is not connected to the grid in any ways. So those systems are mostly seen in cameras alongside the road, gates, um, motorized gates that's far away from home, and some houses also have off grid system, but they're quite expensive, so that they're not seen a lot. In, uh, in, in cities. The modules, we have, we, have, we have three types, Mono, monocrystalline, polycrystalline, and bifacial. The, the, thin, the thin film is only look like, a, it's the, the film that you put on the panel just to protect it and help it, help it regulate the heat. Yeah, I just, I'm sorry, I just want to ask a quick question because of this. With the modules, inverters, and batteries, which one do you guys think is the most important to consider before um, buying into solar? Okay. Batteries? Okay. Wrong. <laughs> inverters, correct. So the thing about inverters is, once you buy an off-grid inverter, you can't uh, you can't switch it over to a hybrid. So you have to buy the correct inverter from the beginning. If your inverter is too small, you can add an, another inverter. A hybrid inverter is too small. You can add an, another hybrid inverter to boost the efficiency, but it's way more expect, uh, ex expensive than just buying the first inverter from the start. So with panels, the PV models, you can always add more panels. The same with Batteries, yeah, and with batteries we have a bunch of different ones. We have lead acid, gel, and uh, lithium ion. With lithium ion, we have LiPo and LiPo4. The thing about the gel batteries, I'm actually going to do something with this, but I don't have enough time now. So, so something that people have to consider when buying batteries is that. When your child or someone gets sick and you have lead acid batteries in your house, if the sickness can be can be traced back to the battery, the medical aid they won't pay for, the medical aid won't pay the bills. The same with fires, lead acid, jar batteries, lithium ion batteries are to catch fire. So if they catch fire and the insurance company go to your house and they see you have the batteries in your house, they're not going to pay out. You will just lose it, everything at once. But with light before batteries, um, if you have them in your house, then you are the safest. This is something that people have to keep in mind before they buy batteries. They're much more expensive, but you won't have any problems with medical insurance, anything like that, because they won't, uh, they don't discharge any any chemical gases and they won't catch fire. So it's very important to keep that in mind. The energy, if, if, 
efficiency I just dealt uh, into actually then net zero on households or on buildings books. I, I tried to read through that. It was quite difficult to actually understand what's going on in the book, but I used that as a guide to do my energy efficiency where mainly focused on insulation of the ceilings and how that should be done. That should be done properly and, and the same for windows and doors. And I'm just going to continue through the time. Okay, so the methodology that I used was probability sampling different quantities of phase just to get a, a, a random group of questions they so they know that the answers are, are diverse. It's not like highly experienced qualities of phase all thing about so that it's low experience, high experience, as you can see on the, the, the other paper I handed out. That was the question they being used and a couple of answers that I got back. But the sort of specialist and the electrical engineers are used a non-probability purposive um, method where I actually chose a specific uh, a specialist and engineers to have, to have a chat with to learn more about her and how we can create this model that QSS can use. Uh, at the beginning, it was supposed to be an interview, but the electrical engineers didn't, didn't want to give consent for me to use their opinions and everything. They said, if I can prove it, I can use it. It's knowledge that they uh, built up. Uh, it was just knowledge that they built up through experience. But it wasn't a documented fact. So they said, if, if I can prove it, I can use it. So yeah, so it was fun. Uh, so the findings I got with the quantity surveys, their knowledge level is very low about solar. They don't know much about solar because we aren't taught anything about solar. That's where the education come in. Most of them, or all of them, actually gathered um, their knowledge about solar through uh, the work, ex work experience or just personal research that they have done. In tertiary education, we didn't receive any education, formal education about solar. And yeah, all of them, practically most of them, practically, uh, practically agreed with me that quantity survey should have uh, more a bigger, bigger role in the solar and the installations thereof, uh, just to give out the more formal, more formal and accurate advice. Because nowadays you have to get an electrical engineer in to give the advice, give uh, the opinions and everything, and it's just extra money for the client to pay at the end of the day. With a sort of specialist again, I couldn't actually use any of the works due to non-consent. But they did give me a lot of advice and a lot of information that I did end up using at the end of the day, which I will discuss now. Okay. So at the start of the project, I wanted to create a model and try to reimagine the, the role of the quantities of air because I firmly believe that the value of quantities of air is on the decline. While software and software and technology is getting better and better, better with that, architects are getting better, engineers are getting better, but quantities of waste are becoming less and less valuable because engineers are, are they have their own wealth quantities and they manage their own uh, sub they manage their own subcontractors through that. And with the increase of software and its Possibility. I'm pretty sure that architects can do it as well. So, I mean, I think it's easy enough for them to do. I mean, if you take a large scale project, yes, you will need a, a quantity surveyor. But a new house being built is not that complex, it's not that difficult. Architect will easily be able to do that. So, then quantity surveyors will only be applicable to large scale projects and we don't have large scale projects in South Africa in abundance. We have a lot of houses and stuff going 
up. So there is currently currently work for uh, for quantity surveys in South Africa, but in future I don't think so. So that's why I want to create a model to try and push quantity surveys out of their their confined spaces of expertise and try to push them into more sustainable stuff like just solar inst installations and stuff like this. And once we can learn them, uh, teach them more about sustainable, teach them more about sustainability and, and stuff like the and stuff like the net zero houses with so that we can even use quantities of ways to push uh, the the carbon tax carbon tax policies in the middle class household in the middle class households because we have all these uh, policies in place which is not actually being uh, followed through. Nobody is going to the middle class household and asking them, okay, how much electricity are being used and taxing them. Therefore, if you have quantity surveys with them knowledge about sustainability, about energy, if patients home, solar, all the, all the construction methods, they can actually go to these people and advise them on methods to reduce the energy usage. So yeah, throughout the project, I wasn't able to create a model that can be used by quantity surveyors to help clients, but I was able to shift my focus from the clients to the quantity surveyors and create a basic guide for quantity surveyors to help advise clients on the correct solar system to use. The guide isn't complete yet because, again, I couldn't use the work until I've proven it, but I am going to do my masters next year or the year thereafter, which, in which I will com complete the guide with the net zero in mind, and it's going to be aimed at the low income houses and not the middle class, because I firmly also believe that we have to take um, care of places like Soweto and other places which aren't able to pay the electrical bill and just keep adding to the depth of depth of, of a school. If we can just cut, if we can get in, in that's a way they on on for the energy they won't add to any future debt. So yeah.